Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Mr. Ray's Math Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to take a look at a dilation of three-sevenths in the plane. So we're going to be constructing this dilation and a three-sevenths is going to be a reduction. It's going to reduce the size by, uh, well, you know, so three-sevenths, compare that to like three and a half would be a half of seven. So it's going to be a little bit less than a half. But this means we can't get there with perpendicular bisectors, right? There's no way to bisect your way down to sevenths. You could cut something in half and then in half again, that would be quarters. You could even go a half again, which would be eighths, but you're never going to get to sevenths. So in order to do a three-sevenths dilation, what we're going to need to construct is a ratio of sevenths. So let's focus on point A to begin with, and I'm going to start by connecting A to the center of the dilation. I'm doing this because I know that no matter what else happens here, point A prime is going to be somewhere along this line. Where? By eyeball. If that's halfway, maybe about there, it's going to be a little bit less than half that it will be dilating. So to locate that point precisely, we're going to begin by making a new line segment. This line segment is almost completely arbitrary. It's going to go off at some angle. I like to do about a 45 degree angle. And the purpose of this line segment is for me to create some equal segments along it so I can create the ratio I need. Now since I want to dilate by 3 sevenths, that means I need to count by sevenths. If you think of 3 sevenths as being 3 sevenths, where 1 seventh would be 1, then 2 sevenths would be 2 sevenths, and we need 3 of them. So we're going to want to divide this line PA into sevenths so we can locate where 3 sevenths of them are. That's going to require seven congruent marks along this line over here. So you're going to set your compass up pretty small and starting at P, you're going to go ahead and start making one mark after another, each congruent, each from where the next mark ended. That one's very light. And sometimes I forget to count as I go, so let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, well I only need seven, so that's good enough. I do like to go ahead and number these. I find that it helps organize my thinking also makes it easier to talk about which points you're referring to. I stopped at 7 because I don't need the 8th point, but it's fine that it's there, just like it's fine this line continues. So to create 3 sevenths, I'm going to start by figuring out how this line compares to 7 sevenths. So I'm going to go to point A and connect it directly with this point 7 on the line I just created. So that creates a triangle where the one side is divided perfectly into 7 congruent pieces, which is going to set me up to divide this side into any number of sevenths that I want. Now I'm interested specifically in three sevenths, so that means this number three is the one I'm really focused on, and what I'm looking for is a line parallel to the blue line I just constructed that's going to go from three over to the side AP. And where it intersects, that's going to divide AP in the ratio three to seven, oh, excuse me, three seven, so in the ratio three four, right, this piece is three of the whole seven, just like this piece is 3 of this whole 7. So to construct that parallel line, I'm going to use a parallelogram construction. Parallelograms are a very easy way to make parallel lines because you need only two marks with the compass. If I take the left-hand side of the parallelogram between 3 and 7 and copy that over here to point A, so I'm just going to flip my compass around there, and from point A I'm going to make a mark. So that's the left-hand side is now congruent to the right-hand side. The other direction I need is between point A and point 7. So setting this distance up on my compass between A and 7, almost. Okay, there we go. So that's the top of my parallelogram and I want to bring that down to the bottom. So once again, just flipping my compass around, I'm going to go from 3 this time and I'm going to make a mark right there. So that mark isn't telling me where A prime is. It's telling me where I can draw a line that's going to be parallel to this line, A7, but going through the point 3 on my constructed side. And where I'm really interested in is right there where it intersects the line PA. Right? So that intersection right there is A prime. Think about what's going on. This is 3 to the whole 7, which means this piece here is 3 to the whole 7. Well, that's 3 sevenths. That's exactly what I'm looking for in this dilation. So that point right there is going to be my A prime, and that really wasn't that bad. For the next two points, B and C, I'm going to do very much the same thing, except I won't have to work quite as hard. I don't need to recreate this line segment and notch off all these little pieces on it because I know something about where they're going to be from point A prime. Now I'll start by connecting P to B because I know B prime is going to live somewhere along this line, P, B. And now I have to figure out where 3 sevenths is there. 
but I'm going to take advantage of the fact that in a dilation, lines remain parallel to their image. So AC isn't going to be the same length as A prime C prime, but AC will be parallel to A prime C prime. So if you imagine A prime to A to C being one half of a parallelogram, I'm going to create the other half of the parallelogram that's going to give me a line parallel to AC. And where it intersects with the line PB is going to be B prime. So that's a lot of words, but let's just go ahead and do it. You'll see this is pretty simple. If I take the distance from A to A prime, then that's the left-hand side of my parallelogram. I want to copy it over. Oh, sorry, wrong, going to B. I want to copy this distance over to B. So I'm just going to flip my compass around and leave a mark right there. So that's the left-hand side of the parallelogram being congruent to the right-hand side. Now I'm going to take the distance from B to A. And this distance I also need to copy. So let's see. Right about there. That's the top of my parallelogram. I want to bring it down to the bottom. So I'm going to go from A prime, put a mark right there. And that point is going to create this parallelogram AB to there to A prime. So let's see, I've used a bunch of blue, so I'll do this one in red. So I'm going to connect point A prime to this intersection right here. And if you want to create the entire parallelogram, you certainly can, although you might find that it makes the picture just a little bit too busy, so I'm not sure that it's helpful to do so. But just so you can see, let me put the ruler there for a minute. There's the parallelogram that we're talking about. A, A prime, to that intersection, to B. And since these lines are parallel, that's going to show me where B prime has to be. It's where that parallel line intersects with the line PB. So now I've got A prime, and I've got B prime. The only thing I need to still find is C prime, and I'm going to do it in exactly the same way. I'm going to start by drawing a line from C all the way to P, the center of this dilation. And I know that C prime has to be somewhere along this line, right? Just by eyeballing it, B and C have this kind of down to the left relationship, so I'm expecting it's going to end up somewhere in that range, but we'll see in a moment. Because just like AB had to, excuse me, A prime, B prime had to be parallel to AB, it's also true that BC has to be parallel to B prime, C prime. So I'm going to make one more parallelogram. This time it's going to be the parallelogram from C to B to B prime. And we're going to finish it off this way. So we're going to take BC, which in my mind is the right side of the parallelogram, and I'm going to set my compass to that length, transfer it over to here, so I have to flip it around to B prime, and I'm going to place that arc down there. So somewhere along there is the intersection I'm looking for. That's the right side of my parallelogram congruent to the left. And now I'm going to measure from B to B prime. This is going to get the top side of my parallelogram. All right, so right there. And I'm going to transfer that down here to C. And where they intersect is the line that I'm looking for. So I'll take my blue pen, and I'm going to connect B to that point. Now that line is parallel to BC. Right? And if I, again, put the ruler there, you can see, here's the parallelogram that we just constructed, even though I'm not actually going to draw it in, because it's just going to confuse the picture a little bit too much. Where that line intersects with the line PC, that's where C prime has to be. So there's my A prime, my B prime, and my C prime. And I can go ahead and finish the construction by drawing those sides in. I like to connect the points so I can see the final triangle. There's AC. Here's, oh, excuse me, A prime, C prime. There's B prime, C prime. And there is A prime, B prime. So this new triangle has been reduced by a factor of three sevenths. So if I were to take the side AB, and, whoops, A prime over B prime. Right. So if I were to ask for the ratio of AB a to A prime B prime, that's the ratio of this side down to this side, how would you figure that out? Well, everything in this picture has to change by the same amount. So whatever the ratio of this side to this side is, it's also got to be the ratio of PA to PA prime. Well, what is the ratio of PA to PA prime? PA is 7. PA prime is 3. So that's a ratio of 7 to 3. And that's the ratio between those two sides. So when you're thinking about the ratio of the perimeter versus the area, remember that the area goes by the square of the perimeter. 
The reason for this is that perimeter is inherently a one-dimensional measurement. It's just a length. That's all perimeter is. That's all length is. One dimension. Area is a two-dimensional measurement. And since we're changing both dimensions by this 7 to 3 ratio, then when we find the area, when we do length times width or base times height, however you want to think about it, we're multiplying that ratio by itself. So instead of going by 7 thirds, the ratio of the areas will go by 49 ninths. So I hope that helps. Check out my other videos. If you have any questions, leave a comment or send me an email. And as always, uh, pass the word along and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. Have a great day.